Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can achieve this 3D look with sprite stacking. Basically, you have each layer stored as a separate frame in a sprite, and then you draw them on top of each other until it becomes a sort of 3D model. You can rotate that and it would appear as if it were a 3D model. So here's what we're going to do in this video step by step. We'll set up a basic sprite stacking system with a building. Then I'll show you how you can import a model made in Magicka Voxel for use with our sprite stacking system. Then we'll set up a camera that follows the player and allows you to rotate the view. We'll work on a solution for depth sorting because camera rotation does mess up depth sorting. Then we're gonna take this a step further and allow you to tilt the camera up and down. And finally, I'll show you how you can add billboard sprites, which are single images that appear straight no matter where the camera is pointed. If you don't have Game Maker yet, you can download it from the description. We're gonna start by creating a new project. I'm gonna choose the blank pixel template because it's a low resolution game that we are making and we want the pixels to appear crisp and not blurred. I've imported a sprite here for the building. You can see it has multiple frames where each frame is a layer to be stacked. In the end, it would form a building like this. You can download the sprite package given in the description to get this. Make sure you set the origin to center. And with that done, let's go and create an object. I'll call this obj stacked. This will be the parent object of every object that needs to use sprite stacking. I'll create another object and this will be for the building, our first stacked object. I'll give it the building sprite that I imported. Then I'll set its parent object to the obj stacked object. So this gets all the events and variables from that object. Let's set up the room now. I'll open it and first of all in the background layer, I'll set a color. Then in the instances layer, I'll place a few instances of the building. Now let's go into the obj stacked object to program how the stacked objects are gonna act and draw themselves. First of all, I'll add the create event. Here we want the image angle to be random just to test how they look rotated. Then I'll also set a random x scale for the instance between 0.8 and 1.4. And then I'll apply that same value to the y scale as well. You can see in the game they are appearing rotated but of course they don't appear stacked yet. To make them 3D let's go and add the draw event. I'm gonna run a loop so it draws each frame of the sprite one pixel apart from each other. I'll set up a basic for loop that has the variable i starting at 0 and it goes as far as the image number which is the number of frames in the sprite. So if the sprite has 5 frames then this loop will repeat 5 times. Now, every time it repeats, I want to draw a sprite. So let's use draw sprite ext so we can apply scaling and rotation. I'll draw the instances sprite. And for the frame number, I'll use i so it corresponds to the loop variable. Let's draw it at the x. And for the y, let's subtract i from it. So with every frame, it goes one pixel higher. For the rest of the arguments, I'm going to use the variables from the instance. So that's the x scale, y scale angle, blend, and alpha. And just before we test this, I'll add some test code to rotate the instances. Let's add the step event. Here I'm gonna take input from the K and J keys. And then I'll add that value to the image angle. Run the game and you are gonna see the buildings. You can also rotate them with the J and K keys. But it all looks really small, so let me quickly set up a test camera. In the room settings, I'll enable viewports, then enable the first viewport, set its camera size to 320 by 180, then the window size to 1280 by 720, and run the game again. It appears much clearer now, and you can see our stacking effect is working. You can rotate with the J and K keys, and it just looks as if it were a 3D model. Now before we continue to adding camera rotation and tilting and the other features, let me show you how you can import a model from Magicka Voxel to use with this stacking system. I have this tree modeled here in Magicka Voxel. So I'll click on export and select the slice option. It should let you save a PNG file. What I got out of this was a vertical sheet, 
But if you've imported animations in GameMaker before, you know it accepts horizontal sheets. So for that, I'm gonna hit this button over here to rotate it. So now it starts from the left with the first layer and goes to the right with each layer above it. If you don't have this button, you can use any software to just rotate the sprite. Now from my Magica Voxel project, I know this has 40 layers because the height specified here is 40. So I'll rename the file that I exported to add underscore strip 40 at the end of it so the game maker knows that this is a sprite with 40 frames placed horizontally. I can now drag this into game maker and there it is, it shows up with all of the frames split. Now all you have to do is make an object for this. So let's say obj voxel tree, then assign the sprite to it, set its parent to obj stacked and place some of these instances inside the room. When you run the game, you'll see your imported models are there. Rotating it is a bit weird right now because I forgot to set the origin to middle center. So after doing that, it rotates as you would expect. So this way you can import models from Magica Voxel or any other program as long as you're able to get them to be separate frames in the same sprite. Now let's set up a camera system so it follows a player that we can control. I've made a simple sprite here for the player. Make sure to set the origin to center. Then let's go ahead and make an object for this. So that's obj player. Let's add the create event here where we're gonna set up the camera. First of all, I'll enable the viewports, then set the first one to visible, then define the camera width and height, and then create a camera with those settings. Then I'll assign that camera as the active camera in the room. Now let's add the end step event where it follows the player. So here I'm gonna calculate the X position of the camera by getting the player's X and subtracting half the camera width from it. Then similarly, I'm gonna calculate the Y of the camera by subtracting half the height from the player's Y. Then I'll just call this function to apply that size to the camera. Let's place this in the room, but I realize I didn't set a sprite, so let's assign that for the player. And now we can go ahead and place this somewhere in the room. You can now run the game to see and make sure that your camera is working. Let's work on rotating the camera first. In the obj player object, I'll add the step event. Here let's take input from the D and A keys for the rotation. Then let's get the current angle of the camera, add the input to it, and apply it back to the camera, modifying its angle with our input. Run the game and you can rotate the camera, but the player stays the same. For this, we can just add a line to set the image angle of the player to the negative of the camera's angle because the camera angle works a bit differently to how normal rotation works in GameMaker. With this, the player now rotates with the camera. Now we want the player to move back and forward. So let's go to the step event. I'm gonna take input from the S and W keys. Then I need the direction to move in, which is image angle minus 90, so it points forward instead of right. Then I'll move it horizontally by getting the X component of a vector that is two pixels long, so that's the speed, and it uses the move angle as the angle. Then let's just duplicate this and change the axis to Y's. And with this, you can now move back and forth and you can turn, so you're able to go wherever you want in the room. You will notice though that the buildings and trees don't stay upright. They are rotating with the camera, which just breaks the 3D illusion. So to fix this, let's go into the obj stacked object and open the draw event where we draw the stacked layers. Here we need to change this. So instead of putting each frame one pixel above the last frame, which it does vertically, we now need it to do that in the direction of the camera. So let's get the camera angle here. I'll use this function to get that and make it negative to get an angle that we can use. Then we'll add 90 to it to get the direction that faces up. Now in the loop, we need to get the offset for each frame. So let's first get the X component of that using I as the length and the camera angle for the direction. Now duplicate this and change the axis to Y's. So now we have both the X and Y components. And then in the draw sprite function, we add the X offset to the X 
and instead of subtracting i from the y, we add the y offset to the y. Run the game now and as you rotate the camera, you can see the models staying upright. So now it's fully giving this illusion of this being a 3D world. Right now we don't have any depth sorting in the game, so you can easily see things overlapping each other when they're not supposed to. Sorting depth is easy in a game where the camera doesn't rotate because you can just use the vertical position, the Y, for the depth. But here you can't do that because the camera could be pointing in any direction. So for this, let's go into the OBJ tagged object and here at the end step event where we're gonna calculate the depth for each tagged instance. First of all, let's get the camera angle, again making it negative and then subtracting 90 from it so we get the vertical axis. Now for the depth, I'm gonna get the negative y component of the instance's y position using the camera angle. And then from that, I'm gonna subtract the x component of the x position using the camera angle again. Basically what's happening here is, this gives you a higher value the more the camera is aligned with the x axis, so it uses the x position of the instance for sorting depth. And then the same is happening here, the more you're aligned with the y axis, the larger number you get here using the y position of the instance for the depth. So this way we have depth sorting covered in both axes. But right now if you run the game and rotate the camera, you're gonna see some instances disappear because they're going behind the background layer. So in the room, let's select the background layer, unlock its depth and set it to something really high like 10,000 so it's way behind the instances. Also while I'm here I'm gonna place some more buildings just to test this out. And now in the game as you rotate the camera the depth sorting updates. For example if you look at this group of trees they always show the correct tree first no matter what the rotation of the camera is. So as far as we can see it's working perfectly. We're gonna go even further now and add tilting to the camera, which isn't actually doing any 3D, it's just doing two separate things. First of all, it's duplicating every frame in a stacked sprite so it appears longer. And then it's extending the camera's vertical range so it can show more instances at the same time. Let's figure out the first thing first. For this, let's go into the OBJ stacked object and open the create event. Here let's make a variable called height, this is how many times each frame or layer in the stack will be rendered. So by default that's gonna be 1 because every frame needs to at least be drawn once. Let's go to the end step event and allow the player to increase the height. I'll get the input from the J and U keys for this and since I'm already using the J and K keys for testing up here, I'll disable that code since we don't need it anymore. Now back here, I'm going to increase the height variable using the tilt input but multiplying it by 0.04 so it doesn't increase super fast. We also need to limit the height to a range so I'll use clamp to keep it locked between 1 and 5. Now to actually make the height have an effect, we need to update the drawing loop over here. I first want the loop to make use of the height variable. So the i variable will go up with the height value each iteration. And let's make sure that the loop still runs once for each frame by multiplying the image number here with the height. Then we need another loop inside the for loop for each frame so that the frames can be rendered multiple times if the height is greater than 1. For this I'll make a variable called j and have it start at 1 because every frame needs to at least be drawn once. Then let's create a repeat loop which runs the number of times stored in the height variable. I am rounding the height variable up, so say if it's a decimal value like 1.3, it just becomes 2. And this way you don't see any gaps between the layers. Now the code that we have here for drawing the layer needs to be repeated. So I'll select these three lines and cut and paste them into the block for the repeat loop. Then in the length there functions, for the length, we need to account for the j value. So I'll add it to the i. And for the frame number over here, we need to divide the i by the height so it pulls the correct frame for this iteration. And finally, before ending the repeat block, we wanna increase j by 1. So say the height is set to 3, 
then this repeat block will run three times for each frame rendering it three times and making the overall model thicker or taller run the game now and if you press the j key you'll see the models becoming longer and it's happening because they are rendering each frame multiple times as the height variable increases but of course this doesn't look correct so the final thing we need to do to finish this off is to increase the camera's range back in the end step event let's run this function to set the size of the camera for the width i'll use the width specified in the player and for the height i'll use the original height but i'll multiply it with a number that number will be one to start with but to it i'm adding the height with one subtracted from it and 0.5 multiplied with it so its effect on the camera's height is limited a bit now if you run the game and make the camera tilt it will look correct but the player is not in the center anymore so to fix that go into the player's end step event where it moves the camera and instead of using the default camera height here let's get the current height of the camera using this function because it can change whenever and with this the player now stays in the center of the camera and you can move rotate and tilt the camera and it all feels 3d without there being any 3d cameras or models you can play around with these values like the limit for the height and how much that height affects the camera's height and these are the values that i found works best and this is how they look now you can make this look more retro by lowering the resolution so the models look more believable as an example in the create event of the player i can set the size of the application surface to the same size as the camera and as long as you have interpolation turned off in the graphic settings of your platform the game should look pixelated and match the resolution of the camera i also tried adding a background layer with tiling enabled and in game it actually works and looks the way it should and it's looking much better then i thought of adding grass which requires billboard objects so a billboard object is something that's a single image but it always faces the camera so to make that i added this grass sprite with variations in its frames i made an object for it in the create event i made it choose a random frame in the step event i'm getting the angle from the camera and applying that to the grass so it's always facing the camera and then for the tilt i'm getting the current height of the camera divided by its original height and applying that ratio to the y scale of the instance so it keeps the same vertical real estate on the screen then i just had the same depth code that i used in the stacked object i just copied it over but you can make it into a script function and keep reusing it wherever you want then i put some of them in the room and with all of that done these billboard grass instances started working perfectly so they are not stacked but just single images that look the same no matter where you have the camera pointed and before we end this you might want to check out this free tool which is a framework for making sprite stacked games it may have more features if you're looking for a pre-built robust system for these kind of graphics and if you're manually drawing your stacked sprites instead of using magica voxel or something then you can import them into this free tool to preview and see how they would look before you actually import them into game maker so this should come in handy and that's it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and have a nice day bye